हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड ऑल दोज हु आर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो आई एम संजय गीजी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज माई सेकेंड वीडियो इन द सीरीज ऑफ रेफ्रिजरेशन टूडे आई विल टॉक ऑन वेपर कॉम्प्रेशन रेफ्रिजरेशन सिस्टम विच इज हाईली फेमस एंड मोस्ट वाइडली यूज रेफ्रिजरेशन एंड एयर कंडीशनिंग सिस्टम Uh, before that i would uh, suggest you to please uh, watch my first video to get the clear idea of uh, background of uh, refrigeration and its uh, wide uh, range of applications uh, and key concepts like ton of refrigeration coefficient of performance energy efficiency ratio and kilowatt per tr etc and also subscribe to my youtube channel uh, and uh, press the bell icon to receive the latest video notifications on time Uh, you may give your feedback in the comment section and all your views and opinions suggestions questions all are uh, very welcome okay uh, thank you uh, so having enough said let's begin now to our topic so vcrs that is vapor compression refrigeration system is the most important and widely used uh, method of uh, uh, refrigeration in fact there are many other methods uh, like natural ice refrigeration vapor absorption refrigeration uh, evaporative cooling steam jet ejector and some non conventional methods like thermoelectric effect peltier effect vortex tube uh, magnetic refrigeration etc but uh, among all vapor compression uh, refrigeration system scores uh, above all uh, and uh, uh, and it is well ahead in competition due to its uh, Uh, unique features and advantages uh, on offer for example number 1 uh, system system is uh, compact sized and uh, and small in uh, uh, <coughs> and small uh, so requires very less space uh, for installation for a given capacity uh, it is available in wide range of uh, capacities like uh, smaller units uh, in the range of 500 watt or 1000 watt 0.5 tr 1 tr 2 tr Uh, which is generally the capacities of uh, uh, freezers uh, deep freezers uh, refrigerators and uh, room air conditioners uh, two very large units uh, in the range of uh, 100 tr 500 tr or up to uh, even up to 1000 tr uh, which are generally required for the cold storage applications or industrial refrigeration and uh, large central uh, air conditioning systems okay uh, number 3 it is applicable for wide range of temperatures it covers from about minus 35 degree celsius to plus uh, plus uh, 20 degree celsius uh, number 4 uh, it offers relatively higher cop uh, thereby power consumption can be saved number number 5 it is in operation it is uh, really safe and uh, highly reliable uh, again uh, it is clean system and relatively requires less maintenance Uh, therefore uh, vcrs is uh, applied vcrs is applied in about uh, 80 to 85% of the total applications across the world some typical applications to note are uh, the uh, here in the background image you see uh, various uh, these are all very fam familiar figures uh, you might have come across uh, some point in time some point and some place Uh, this is a domestic refrigerator which is a common uh, facility in uh, almost all all kitchens it has become now basic necessity in the modern kitchens okay um, in, uh, in the same way uh, you often visit uh, various supermarkets like this uh, in dmart or uh, big bazaar reliance mart there you often uh, see such uh, uh, walk in coolers where a lot of uh, attractive food, uh, food food items are placed like uh, cadbury uh, cakes or ice creams and other cold products uh, in the same way you often uh, uh, you might visit to the places like uh, bakery shops uh, or snacking snack centers cake shops where there you see such a display cases so which are all refrigerated one uh, there you see many cold drink bottles uh, cakes and uh, dessert uh, sweets all such of uh, all such food items required to be maintained at low temperature then there are uh, deep freezers like this uh, 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 which are often seen in the some uh, milk dairies or some uh, food industry where uh, frozen foods are uh, uh, stored inside uh, at about minus uh, 20 degrees 20 25 degrees uh, minus 25 degrees celsius uh, this is uh, again split ac <coughs> which is used in air conditioning uh, 
it is used for in a residential air conditioning in the bedrooms or uh, such uh, such unit is also uh, seen at uh, various bank uh, bank atm outlets uh, when you often visit it, visit them okay uh, then large uh, systems like uh, cold storages uh, <coughs> and ice plants uh, all these uh, all these uh, uh, these are uh, these are only a common uh, few examples uh, which use the vapor compression refrigeration systems in all uh, uh, it has got a, a very wide range of uh, applications in fact uh, whatever development we are uh, witnessing now uh, in the refrigeration uh, and air conditioning field is uh, due to uh, major contribution of uh, major contribution by the vapor compression refrigeration systems so that's how it uh, it is very uh, important uh, to study and understand its uh, uh, its pr working principle and everything its analysis and all okay uh, let us uh, get on to uh, the construction diagram okay so this is how the uh, uh, basic uh, com uh, these are the basic components of vapor compression refrigeration system here you see this is a compressor condenser expansion device and evaporator which perform four uh, fundamental processes uh, all these components are connected to each other uh, in a closed manner uh, so this forms a closed system and uh, through this system a working fluid is uh, circulating again and again in a cyclic manner this is known as a refrigerant which performs the work of a refrigeration okay uh, this uh, unit uh, particularly uh, evaporator uh, this is the place where uh, we obtain the cooling effect so uh, this is uh, this is located in the space from which uh, heat is to be removed and uh, it is uh, it is maintained at the low temperature that's why it is said here insulated cold chamber okay uh, so here uh, now understand the working the low pressure low temperature vapor uh, in the state of vapor it is coming from the evaporator uh, it leads to the suction of compressor uh, so in the compressor it gets compressed to high pressure and high temperature uh, vapor and it is discharged by the compressor to the it, at high pressure then this vapor at high pressure and high temperature condition goes to condenser where it uh, uh, where it uh, where it loses the heat of condensation latent heat of condensation and converts to liquid uh, this since this is a phase change process so condensing temperature remains same only phase change occurs from vapor to liquid then this uh, liquid at high pressure and high temperature condition leads to expansion wall in expansion wall a throttling action takes place um, like uh, throttling means a sudden drop in uh, uh, pressure a sudden resistance is offered to the fluid flow uh, thereby what happens is uh, a large reduction due to, uh, pressure high pressure reduces to low pressure at the exit uh, thereby temperature also reduces and during this process some of the liquid uh, is uh, flashed into vapor so the condition here uh, here will be uh, uh, liquid and vapor mixture low pressure liquid and vapor uh, mixture uh, 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 although the part uh, the vapor part will be uh, less in amount uh, it will be like uh, for 10 for 5 to 10% or so but major part will be in liquid state uh, such low pressure low temperature liquid leads to evaporator uh, and it absorbs the heat uh, from this space uh, as its uh, latent heat of evaporation and it converts back to uh, vapor and uh, low pressure low temperature vapor and leads to compressor to uh, again uh, and then it starts its uh, next cycle again uh, this compressor uh, is generally a reciprocating type or maybe a rotary uh, compressor uh, centrifugal type uh, <coughs> this compressor is to be uh, provided with the work input like uh, electrical motor electrical power as long as it keeps on running uh, it keeps this uh, refrigerant in circulation at uh, the steady rate uh, and uh, the refrigeration is achieved at this uh, low temperature okay uh, let us now see uh, now, now look at this uh, small animation uh, here you see this uh, this is shown in red uh, uh, red color because uh, uh, compressor discharge line condenser and up to uh, expansion device uh, this uh, this is the expansion device all these are under high pressure and thereby high temperature and uh, after uh, expansion wall uh, in and in the evaporator and up to suction uh, suction line of the compressor 
it is all under low pressure and low temperature that's why uh, that's why shown in the blue color so uh, system is divided into two parts one is the high side system and other is high, low side system uh, high pressure and high temperature occurs here and low pressure low temperature occurs here okay uh, now see this uh, schematic diagram shown over here the compressor condenser expansion wall and evaporator okay uh, <coughs> it's uh, uh, all these processes uh, thermo, uh, are, th are thermodynamic in nature and ideal thermodynamic processes uh, are shown uh, uh, on the ts uh, temperature versus entropy plot and pressure versus enthalpy plot okay uh, since uh, phase change processes are involved here condensation and here evaporation that is liquid to vapor vapor to liquid okay uh, on this uh, on the charts uh, we often get uh, such line this is known as a saturation line which uh, indicates uh, the existence of a two phase uh, two phase system that is liquid and vapor okay let us uh, take a look at uh, a typical uh, uh, ph chart uh, let us look at uh, and let us learn the various phases this, this is pressure versus enthalpy diagram uh, this uh, this curve or this dome is known as saturation dome uh, this left part uh, from this to up to this point it is a saturated liquid curve and from this point to this point uh, on the right hand side it is a saturated vapor curve okay uh, uh, at uh, on this curve it is all the condition is saturated uh, liquid and uh, here it is all saturated vapor to the left of this it is all liquid so hence called uh, subcooled liquid region uh, to the right of this curve it is all vapor hence called superheated uh, vapor region and in between it is a liquid and vapor mixture so it is said uh, wet vapor wet vapor region okay uh, uh, the uh, such ph diagram is used to uh, indicate the cycle diagram uh, like this uh, let us have a look at uh, typical uh, refrigerant uh, ph chart now see this is the pressure or the actual di actual diagram of uh, ph pressure and enthalpy chart of uh, refrigerant r134 r134 is uh, one of the most commonly used uh, refrigerant nowadays in almost uh, it is used in almost uh, all general applications like uh, uh, domestic refrigerator, uh, deep freezers, uh, room ACs, car ACs for, for, uh, for small capacity, uh, cold storages, etc. Uh, the <coughs> there are other refrigerants like this are R11, R12, R22, R410A, uh, ammonia, um, etc. Uh, uh, R, uh, this is the, this uh, this is the code number or code name, uh, particular code name, uh, depending upon the chemical composition. Uh, of that refrigerant okay so such property table property uh, ph charts are available for uh, are different for the different uh, refrigerant uh, for uh, different refrigerant all are available uh, the format remains same uh, the the nature is like this uh, values will uh, change from uh, refrigerant to refrigerant uh, refrigerant depending upon its uh, composition now see here uh, this is the pressure axis this is the enthalpy axis uh, ph and this is this is this uh, saturated liquid curve this is the saturated vapor curve uh, he subcooled liquid here uh, wet region uh, liquid and vapor mixture here and here uh, uh, superheated region okay uh, here you see some temperature uh, values uh, <coughs> listed along the saturated curve uh, let me show you one another picture Uh, now see here uh, various temperature uh, uh, values are listed uh, along this line these are the saturation temperatures corresponding to these uh, pressures uh, saturation temperature means uh, at the point at uh, uh, the temperature at which uh, the actual boiling or evaporation takes place or phase change takes place the same temperature appears here at the saturated vapor because uh, during the phase change process uh, temperature uh, remains same uh, pressure remains same temperature remains same only the phase change occurs uh, so that's why we get such nature and uh, as the pressure increases saturation temperature also increases pressure when pressure decreases saturation pressure also uh, saturation liquid 
temperature also decreases okay uh, on the superheated region you see uh, there are the constant entropy lines then uh, its nature is uh, in inclined ones with uh, having more slope uh, that's why uh, on this on this uh, diagram uh, you see here here it is shown as a saturated uh, as a uh, inclined lines okay so thermodynamically 1 to 2 process is a isentropic line so uh, process uh, follows along the constant entropy line 1 to 2 2 uh, comes into uh, the uh, cycle start at this uh, point number 1 that is uh, uh, saturated vapor condition and uh, af after uh, compression uh, it goes into superheated region then from 2 to 3 it is a condensation constant pressure condensation and heat rejection and after condensation uh, the uh, point number 3 is on the saturated liquid curve then 3 to 4 is the isenthalpic expansion that is constant enthalpy expansion process so H3 equal to H4 thereby, thereby we get a vertical line uh, then, four to four, uh, then point number 4 comes into uh, wet region or liquid and vapor mixture region so thereby it has a dryness fraction x uh, to specify the exact condition uh, then 4 to 1 is a uh, evaporation a constant pressure evaporation process where heat uh, heat is absorbed at the low, uh, low temperature uh, this is how the cycle is completed and this is a typical case of this is a typical case of uh, simple saturation cycle because uh, we have two states 1 and 3 at uh, the saturation conditions okay now see uh, the refrigeration effect to find the refrigeration effect uh, obtained by the cycle we need to have the enthalpy values uh, H, this difference enthalpy difference h1 minus h4 uh, this is the refrigerating effect uh, 1 to 2 compression process so h2 minus h1 enthalpy difference uh, will be the work input uh, in the same way uh, h2 minus h3 this difference this to this will be heat rejected at the condenser okay uh, so these are the equations uh, are required thereby we can find the COP of a uh, COP of uh, cycle COP of cycle will be uh, refrigerating effect this uh, this quantity divided by work input that is H2 minus H1 okay so to uh, perform the uh, uh, analysis of upper uh, compression refrigeration cycle we need to have the property variables uh, of uh, all these end states 1 2 3 4 and these are obtained from this uh, pH diagram ok uh, similar to pH diagram uh, property tables are also available for the saturation condition and uh, superheated condition uh, uh, now uh, let me just now let us go through the uh, uh, analysis part uh, of the vapor compression refrigeration cycle uh, like this uh, <coughs> see this is how the cycle is uh, drawn uh, to, uh, to carry out the uh, all steps of the calculation I need to have uh, all the property uh, pro property va variables and values of 1 2 3 4 all the end states ok uh, now see here uh, all the property variables will be taken uh, for the end states uh, from the property uh, proper pH chart and the property tables of the uh, corresponding uh, refrigerant ok and also need to mention the uh, condition of the uh, uh, condition of that state end state in this way uh, for all the state 1 2 3 4 uh, required properties are listed out uh, then <coughs> the, uh, these are some relations uh, are uh, used uh, when whenever some uh, data is unknown now see uh, uh, 1 to 2 process is the uh, isentropic compression so WC compressor work input uh, is H2 minus H1 in kilojoule per kg because all the enthalpy and entropy values are given per, for uh, 1 kg of uh, uh, substance uh, per unit substance so 2, to, 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heat rejection process that is cooling and condensation of uh, refrigerant at the conden condensing and uh, uh, condensing pressure and uh, condensing temperature <coughs> uh, now see uh, heating effect is obtained as a uh, H2 enthalpy difference H2 minus H3 then isenthalpy expansion or throttling uh, occurs when uh, is, uh, equation is H3 equal to H4 uh, then for saturated liquid uh, H3 equal to HF uh, and uh, entropy H3 equal to SF <coughs> now see 
दिस दिस नोटेशन एफ एंड एफ एंड जी एफ इज यूज सफिक्स एफ इज यूज फॉर दि सैचुरेटेड लिक्विड प्रॉपर्टीज एंड सफिक्स जी लेट मी शो हि हाँ सफिक्स जी इज यूज सिंस दर्ड इज इन सैचुरेटेड वेपर कंडीशन जी इज यूज जी इज यूज टू इंडिकेट saturated vapor condition and f is used to indicate the saturated liquid condition okay this is a saturated liquid and this is saturated vapor okay <coughs> uh, then after obtaining all the enthalpy values uh, we can calculate the refrigerating effect like this h1 minus h4 kilo joule per kg let mr be the mass flow rate of refrigerant uh, circulating in kg per second so refrigerating capacity is given by product of uh, mr into refrigerating effect so we obtain it as a kilowatt because this is kg per second this is kilo joule per kg 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 get cancelled remains is uh, kilo joule per second that is kilowatt uh, specific volumes uh, v1 which it is required for uh, refrigerant volumetric flow rate at the compressor suction uh, theoretical piston displacement rate is given like this vth equal to mr into specific volume meter cube per second uh it a volumetric uh, let uh, assume that uh, volumetric efficiency of a compressor then uh, actual piston displacement rate is given by this v actual equal to v theoretical by it a volumetric uh, efficiency uh power output to compressor wc is uh, obtained by mass flow rate into work of compression h2 minus h1 into mr kilowatt heat rejection capacity qc Uh, is obtained as mr into h2 minus h3 in kilowatt then cop of for refrigeration cycle re divided by w refrigeration effect divided by work input so this by this so we uh, obtain then cop of for heat pump will be heating effect upon the work input <coughs> uh, compressor power per ton of uh, refrigeration <coughs> is given by this formula 3.5167 divided by cop kilowatt per tr then mass uh, there is a term called mass flow rate per tr kg per second per tr so this is obtained like this uh, 3.5167 divided by refrigerating effect h1 minus h4 kg per second per tr in the same way volumetric flow rate uh, re of refrigerant per tr meter cube per second per tr uh, so this is uh, <coughs> m star multiplied by small v1 uh, specific volume so this is how it is obtained then there is a uh, these uh, two factors indicate the size of the system uh, this value should be as as minimum as low as possible uh, because for per unit capacity uh, this flow rate should be as low as possible if it, this value increases uh, it will increase the size of the compressor as well as size of the overall system now heat rejection ratio it is defined as loading on the condenser per unit refrigeration effect or it is a ratio of a heat rejection in condenser to the heat rejection in uh, heat absorption evaporator qc by qe H2 minus H3 divided by H1 minus H4. Uh, by mathematical formulation, we obtain that uh, it has H heat re heat ratio ratio equal to one plus one upon COP of refrigerator. Okay. Uh, <coughs> with this, uh, all these uh, all the, uh, I have covered all the calculation steps required in the uh, for uh, required in the uh, analysis of vapor compression refrigeration system. All uh, these steps uh, may or may not be required. uh we have to use these uh, equations as as and uh, as per the uh, requirement in the uh, of the problem okay uh, uh, uh this uh, video i will uh, i will uh, i will end here uh, in the next video i am going to explain or uh, rather i am going to give you a proper training to how to use the ph chart how to read the ph chart how to plot uh, processes and uh, this uh, vcrs cycle on to the ph chart and how to obtain various properties uh, <coughs> and how to relate <coughs> the property tables and, uh, and uh, to the prop the ph ph diagram uh, uh, let me see, let me show you uh, this uh, ph diagram uh, i am going to uh, explain you uh, each and every part of this how to read and how to use this is a very powerful tool without which uh, uh, vcrs uh, system manual design analysis cannot be completed <coughs> just can, we cannot think of uh, any other uh, way uh, then there are the property tables like this saturation property table and superheated property table uh, how to correlate them uh, and uh, uh, how to use them that i will uh, train you in the next uh, video okay uh, thank you have a nice day uh,
please subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, hit the bell icon and uh, also like the video if you have liked and uh, put any comments or feedback all the all all your opinions and suggestions all are questions all are welcome thank you have a nice day have a great time ahead uh, see you in the next video